Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today a couple of my projects have been held up because I'm waiting for various parts to arrive. So I've got a couple of things I'm working on that I was hoping to bring you a video today that's going to take a little bit longer than I thought. So in the meantime, I thought it'd be a bit of fun to take a look at a few little gadgets that I picked up off Timu a while back that I haven't shown you yet. These are supposed to be things that are quite helpful in the field of electronics. Now, I've got a feeling some may be helpful, some not so much. They were all very, very cheap. This time of year, everyone's advertising them as Christmas stocking fillers, Timu, Wish, AliExpress, Amazon, and many others. So let's take a look at some of the random so-called helpful little gadgets and devices that I picked up very cheaply from Timu a while back. Let's have a look what we've got. Right, various nondescript parcels arrived in the post. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I bought these myself, so you don't have to. So we can see, are these actually any good or are they more of a novelty? Well, let's dive in and see what we've got. I love a nondescript package. What do I have? Made in China, not surprisingly. Right, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So these are supposedly pliers that you can hold wires in while you're soldering them together. Now, I couldn't quite... I'm having trouble getting into them for a start. Now, I couldn't quite work out from the picture how these actually work. I think this is going to be one I'm going to need to try. What I gleaned from the photos on Timu was that somehow you're supposed to hold a wire in this but I couldn't quite work out how, whether you just hold it down like that while you're soldering it. It doesn't seem to be an ideal solution and a little bit fiddly and a little bit stiff. I'm not overly convinced by these, but we'll give them a try. All of this stuff was remarkably cheap. And again, like some of the other gadgets we've looked at previously, there's various places you can get these. There's very similar stuff on Wish, AliExpress, even Amazon. I just picked these up on Timu because they were a good price and they arrived quickly. That's a bonus. Is it any good though? I don't know. I'm not sure about the build quality straight away. It's very flimsy. I'll give them a try. Not convinced though. Hold fire on buying those until we've given them a go. Let's see what's in this bag. I haven't opened a Timu parcel for a while. Now, what do we have? We have small bags within the bigger bag, as usual. Ah, oh, these are cutters. The irony is I need some cutters to open the packet of cutters. It's like when you buy scissors and they come in a packet, right? Right, these cutters were like £1.49 or something ridiculous. Now, I have these Mansman ones that I generally use on my bench. They're okay, they're sort of mid-range, weren't too expensive, but they do the job quite nicely. They're quite nippy and snippy, which is what you want from a pair of snippers. These, I don't know. Right, let's remove the protective top. Now, as you can see, these are the angled ones, which is supposed to make it easier. I don't know how good these are going to be. Okay, see these are only slightly angled, these are more angled. I wonder if they might be a bit more useful. We'll see how they are. We'll give them a try on the bench. But then I'm testing these so you don't have to. So, ah, now this was a weird little gadget that I saw. It's basically just a bit of plastic. You could probably make this, but for the three or four pound that it was, convenience I guess. This again is supposedly to help you solder two wires together. The idea is you put the wires across these little slots here and you can get in the middle with your soldering iron. I mean there's loads of different ways you can do this. You can have little clips, grips, all sorts of little crock clips and things and spring-loaded holders. There's a whole wealth of things to hold wires while you're soldering. This just seemed like really simple, really cheap. It's got magnets on the bottom, so if you're working on some sort of metal surface, not that you would be, but it will magnet down apparently. You could probably 3D print something like this, to be honest. But again, in the name of science or entertainment, I shall give it a try. Now this this is a real novelty. Not often I'm found browsing the electronics section of Timu just to see is there any little hidden gems in there that I want to share with you. This is an auto-ranging digital multimeter that costs £14 and it can wake you up in the morning. 
why you would want to be woken up in the morning by your multimeter, I don't know. I'm not sure what scenario that's going to be useful. But in the name of entertainment, let's take a look at it. It's actually branded as Anang. We've looked at Anang stuff before and it's actually not too bad for the price. What do we get? We did a bunch of cheap multimeters from Timu before and they weren't all that great. You never know, this one might be all right. Okay, so you get quite a lot of instructions with it. That's useful. Comes in a little case. Kind of reminds me of that auto ranging one we looked at before. That didn't turn out too well. Ah, so here we go. This one's in landscape format. Comes with some pretty generic looking test leads. Then remember it was only 14 pounds. Oh, more instructions, okay. And it comes sealed for freshness, look at that. Well, there we go. It's an Anang auto ranging digital multimeter, which has a calendar and an alarm clock. These are all things that don't necessarily belong together. Extremely cheap quality plastic and looks like it takes a couple of AA batteries. So I'll have a rummage around for some. Didn't actually come with any. We've got a really tiny little range switch there. The quality of this is not great. Connections on the end there for your probes, and that's about all you've got on the sides. No rubber bumper or anything included with this one. I think a bit of a novelty. It actually looks a lot better in the pictures, as is often the case with these things, than it is in reality. Anyway, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's stick some batteries in it and give it a go. Okay, so let's take a look at these pliers. You can see how cheaply finished it is, by the way, some of the paint's coming off there. The one thing I did note about these, apart from the rather tricky spring thing here, is they're just really stiff to open and close. These are currently at £3.36, but the prices go up and down all the time on these things. So what I glean from the pictures, and what I couldn't quite work out is it's it's got this springy bit here which isn't really apparent on any of the pictures uh, but I will notice they've done quite a good job on that one that matches up quite nicely this one really not so much these are really pretty fiddly so you have to push this down put your wire in there okay and then I guess we do the same for this one And then you line them up now look how this one's really loose because that's not actually bent correctly i guess you could correct that if you took that out and bent it to the correct shape it's not actually going to grip the wire i just think it's so cheaply made because if you put it where you're supposed to it's not actually gripping the wire at all this side's fine this just seems a real faff if that had actually been put together properly then this kind of would work, but I still think it's just a bit of a faff. I mean, yeah, it would it would do the thing, but the fact that this doesn't hold it, uh, even so, it just pops out. I, I'm gonna say that's really not a win for me. I'm really not impressed with this. I had my doubts when I first opened it. These are sold as a, a helper for soldering i don't think they're going to be that helpful i could see me getting more frustrated with these than anything if you had two sides that were actually assembled correctly like this yes i could see that's plausible there are a lot better ways even though this is cheap i'd say nah forget it so soldering device number two is this little plastic device looks pretty cheaply made you could probably 3d print one to be honest. Now it does stay on the blurb that it's suitable for different size wires. Yeah, I get that because of the, the V shape. It does have a magnet on the bottom. So if you were working on something, have this convenient metal cover here. Yeah, brilliant. Does indeed magnet to it. So if I'm working on something and I want to solder the wires together for this object, I can just magnet it to the top. It's not going to move around well a little bit maybe it's not as powerful a magnet as they'd have you believe but it might be enough to hold it there while you solder a couple of wires on all right let's have a go how good is this going to be i uh, sometimes we'll need to solder wires that may be attached to something the other end maybe a bit long and there's maybe a bit of pull on that particular wire so i can already see 
again, I would get frustrated, I think, with this. Unless you really push it down into the groove so it sticks, they all seem much the same. Not overly impressed. I mean, yes, it would do. It would do the job. You can get in there with your soldering iron and solder that together. Right, so let's let's just see. How much is this going to move about? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it kind of would work. I don't know how, how resistant this is to uh, heat. Not at all. Not, not resistant to heat at all. I'm going to say not that good because if I was using it on my mat, which I generally would be, I don't generally tend to be soldering on a convenient metal cover and I was going to solder it, it's gonna, it's gonna move about all over the place, isn't it? You can see that already. It was better when it was magneted. I can see me getting really frustrated with this. This and the pliers fail. Now what I tend to use if I need something to hold wires for soldering is something like this Omnifix, which is pretty cool. It's magnetic and it comes apart. So you've got these little bases and this is like a ball bearing type thing so you can angle it all different angles and you've got a spring loaded little clip there so you can hold wires or you could hold a PCB if you're working on something. This to me is way more useful and hold something in place like that while you're working on it. You can change the angle of it because you've got those ball bearings. They're pretty strong magnet as well. Sometimes it's better spending a few more pounds to get something that's actually usable and you can see that if I did want something to hold a wire that this would be way more useful for me to work on. If I was going to hold a wire, I could do it like that. And then I can position it exactly where I want it to work on. And it's heavy enough that it's not going to move about. And these are really strong magnets. So I'd recommend getting something like this. Now the cutters, they look a bit more promising. And they were really cheap. I paid 149 I think they're on there for 125 at the moment. But you can pick up these same sort of ones from like Wish or AliExpress or anywhere really. I use these cutters. These are my daily driver cutters. These are Mansman and they've got really nice spring action on them. Very happy with them. But if I want to cut something with this, easy, nice and easy, all day long. Really good. Sometimes have to cut like legs of components that are quite chunky. And it's not a problem for these. Fires them across the workbench quite nicely. So these £1.25, I can't even remember. They came as a set with a whole bunch of other stuff. They came with some pliers and stuff. And these were from Amazon. I use these all the time. I have no, no problem with those at all. These, the only thing I don't like is I'm used to the return on these being quite strong. Whereas on this... Not so much. I guess it's quite a... Oh yeah, the spring is just that. Okay. Not really much different. I would say actually with these I have to put a bit more force on it to cut the wire. With these, not so much. So actually, they're actually alright. Do you know, for the price, I'd say it's worth having a couple of those in your drawer, just in case these should break or anything. It's always useful to have a few extras. And I guess because they're a bit more angled, when you want to cut the legs off a board, you can get in and get right in. Whereas with these, you have to kind of angle them down a little bit. They're actually all right for the money. I'd say that's a win. First one we've had from this batch so far. Right, the digital multimeter by Anang that wakes you up. Okay, so long press on mode, and you can use the adjust button to select between 12 and 24 hours. Press mode again, that means I can change the time. It's currently telling me it's 10.42. That allows me to change the year, which is 2022 currently. So let's change that, so that's correct. And the month is the 12th, correct. And the day is the 14th today, change it to 14th, and it's very helpfully telling me that it's Saturday, which is great. Actually, I can already see an advantage in this multimeter because I never know what the day of the week is. Maybe that's just me, is it? Right, so mode again, 
Right, so that is now set. Okay, so the time is now set. Our little stand there. If you're using this for your bedside alarm clock. Right, so I guess that takes it into alarm mode. So let's see if we can set an alarm. Right, so I've set the alarm. So in theory, when it goes to 11 o'clock, we should see if it goes dee 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 or not. 11 o'clock, I've got nothing. Well, I couldn't get the alarm to work, so never mind. Let's move on from that. Okay, so we've got DC volts, AC volts. So we've got resistance, continuity, and diode. We'll use the select there. There we go, diode. Okay, continuity. We've got auto. You can change the range, I presume. Yes. Okay, ohms, ohms. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, it's got capacitance, amazingly. All right, capacitance. Let's have a go, shall we? 4.85 microfarads. Okay, yeah, 4.7. It's not a full test of this meter. Okay, so let's try some DC voltage, shall we? So I've got a power supply here, which I have calibrated, and I know it's pretty spot on. I'm going to start with 10 volts. There we go, 10 volts. So let's have a look on my Unity. Let's see what I get. Let's hook that up. DC volts, power on. 10.02. Okay, it's not bad. Let me try on this socket and see, because it's normally pretty bang on this one. So let's have a look what we got. Yeah, 10.01. Okay, cool. So we were reading 10.02 on here, 10.01 on here. Let's see what we get on our NN612. It's just a quick test, this. Just see how far out it is. 10.03. It's not horrible, then. I've used worse. When we did the test on the cheap meters from Timu, we had some that were further off than this. It's actually not bad at all. Let's go, let's go with 20 volts. I've actually done a little bit of testing with these meters and against my Solatron 7045 bench meter. So I'll just put those on the screen so you can have a look at the comparisons. See, this is giving me 20.07. Interesting. On the Unity, we get 20.03. Okay, not bad. And let's see what I get on my socket and see. This one's normally pretty good. 20.03. Okay, fair enough. All right, so it's not the most accurate, but it's not horrible. But it's quite cheap. You can pick these up for about 13, 14 pounds. Bit of a novelty. The alarm clock's a bit of a novelty. Can't see exactly why you would want a multimeter to wake you up in the morning. The only thing I'm going to be measuring at that time of the morning is my resistance to getting out of bed. Anyway, it's not horrendous, and comparative to some of the other cheap multimeters I've looked at, that's actually all right, especially for the money. The only thing I really don't like about it is this really cheap, horrible dial. It's really small to get hold of. At least on these meters, you've got something you can actually get hold of. So there we go, not a full test of the multimeter, just enough to know that it's not horrendous, actually, for the money. We've looked at worse ones on this channel. It's actually not too bad. It's just this really cheap, nasty little switch that I'm not so fond of. But if you didn't have a multimeter, there's definitely worse ones you can get, and at least this one can get you out of bed in the morning. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not, to be honest. So there we go, all the gadgets we looked at today, pliers, no little wire holding thing no not good cutters actually pretty good for the money actually they're all right this is a bit of a gadget it's a bit of a novelty it seems super popular though because a couple of times i went to look back at the details for this video and it was sold out definitely not recommending it as a serious multimeter for hobby use but there are worse ones you can get so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this quick little peek into some bits and bobs, some of which were useful-ish, some, yeah, not so much. But there we go. Hopefully the bits and bobs I'm waiting for will turn up any day now so I can get my next video finished. And I'll be back very, very soon with some more test gear repairs, electronics kits, and retro gaming. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.